welcome to the official Season 8 LG CHL Award Show. I am Suse Marie, or Season 8 Suse Marie, General Manager B Major. Along with me tonight in the festivities, we have Season Manager Marino Swag. Woo, what up? <laughs> And we have CKX Whale Fan Season 8 Kitchener Rangers GM. Oh, What's guys. up, buddy? Uh, I, feel, I feel so out of place being the only AGM on the panel, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Whatever. All right, I, so. We all, know, we all know I ran Mississauga to begin with. Fuck yes. It. Time yes. to give away some awards. Yeah, right, let's do yes, it. Let's give away some of these awards. So, for anybody that's not familiar with the awards show, this is pretty much an annual thing that happens every season. Um, our awards tonight, we will first knock out the uh, standing wise awards, which we will start in a bit, but here are the awards that will be announced tonight. We have the OHL Conference Champions, QMJHL Conference Champions, o the divisional winners of the CHL, both O and Q, our CHL Top Scorer, Sportsman of the Year, Rookie of the Year, most Valuable Player of the Year, Goaltender of the Year, Manager of the Year, selected by the uh, staff, Defenseman of the Year, Memorial Cup Champions, and Memorial Cup MVP, which is selected by the Memorial Cup winning GM. So... Okay, before we, before we move on, man, is this like a tick for you? Like... <laughs> yeah, is this like, is this like something you have to do? <laughs> 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 Alright. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're all going to announce our separate awards here. But first, we will start with our divisional awards. So starting out, um, Mike, um, who were two of our division winners for the season this year? Well, technically, you know, the Q is all one division, but I didn't think that it was fair that only one Q team gets a division win title and, you know, the O get four. Uh, now, while I can't exactly give four, obviously the Armada won. Uh, I mean, they, they absolutely dominated all season, uh, led by great fucking goaltending, uh, excellent defense, and some really good scoring. Uh, so the Armada obviously is the division winners there, but I also want to give a divisional award to Moncton. Even though there weren't separate divisions, Moncton was still on Armada's ass all season. Um, they absolutely dominated during the playoffs as well, but Moncton, I believe, deserves an, a division title as well, even though the divisions weren't separated in the queue. So I'm going to go Armada and Moncton. Uh, congratulations. Okay, now we will kick it over to Marino Swag for his two division We got the Saginaw Spirit uh, coming out of the OHL West. Uh, Saginaw finished with a 52, 22, and 7 uh, record, totaling 111 points, finishing second in the conference. <clears throat> I think they had a, a really good team all year. I think Nylander leading the team with 97 points. I also being the leading goal scorer, I thought he did a really good job building this team front to back. I honestly thought they were going to go further in the playoffs, but it doesn't mean it was a loss for the season, I think. Well, they, they ran into a brick wall, being the Firebirds. Yeah. yeah, the, the Flintbirds. Flint Sorry, Flintbirds. Flint 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 yeah, Flintbirds. Flint but I think, they, I think they did really well. You know, you can't knock them uh, going out earlier than expected. You know, shit ha like that happens. But... I think it's good for them. I, I think all of their players really did well. Okay, so uh, Whale Fan, now to your assigned divisional winner. Yes, and my this, my assigned divisional winner was the North Bay Battalion, the team that actually was one of the couple teams predicted to go all the way to the Memorial Cup Finals. Um, this North Bay Battalion squad went 60, 60 wins. Congratulations on getting your 60th win in a I don't know if that's the first thing, but anyways, uh, 60, 19, and 2. That's a, that's a really outstanding record. I'm kind of jealous at the same time. But anyways, <laughs> enough with me. This North Bay Battalion squad really had like a really good set of offense, good set of defense. And then I can even recall on some nights that, you know, when I, when I saw action versus this, battalion squad these games were actually either well what there was one blowout game but the rest of them were really good 
I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that this North Bay Battalion squad really, really brought in a lot of talent. The only thing that bit them was just the Barry Colts getting hot at the right time. I, yeah, it, I mean, if we had a, if we had a President's Cup winner in the CHL, it would have gone to to the North Bay Battalion. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, they were they absolutely and, and not what? Uh, they had 122 points this season. Actually, right at, a, at 122 exactly. points, they they had more points than, than by far than anyone else. I mean, the only person people near them was the Kingston Frontenacs at 115. Um, so I mean, if we even had a President's Cup winner, it would have been the North Bay Battalion. Okay, so uh, now the Maya Stein Divisional winner um, in the OHL Eastern Conference, finishing out the season with 150 points with a 54, 20, and 7 record. The Kingston Frontenacs, um, led by Audacity and SF49ers, um, both very talented managers, will be coming back. Will be coming back again for Kingston in season 23, the CHL. Um, a very solid season. We all know the success they had before being knocked out in the final round. We will get to some of that in a little bit. Um, final round award-wise in the Memorial Cup. But Kings an all-around very solid team. Solid defensively, goaltending, and forward-wise. I am sure we will see a lot more from them in their team in this upcoming season. Last but not least, uh, Mike, you, you get a little bit of uh, relativity here. Um, I do, I do, and, 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 I, and the only reason why I'm mentioning these guys is because I called it from the very beginning that they were going to be absolutely outstanding. I mean, the Crips, anybody who knows the Crips U brothers uh, knows that they're, they're going to put together a team that works for them and they can score themselves. So the London Knights coming out of the OHL West Midwest Division just absolutely dominated. Uh, the only, I mean, the only people that competed with them were the Saginaw Spirits and the Flint Birds, and we all know, you know, the Flint Birds ended up beating them in the in the, uh, in the playoffs to move on. Um, so, I mean, the, the London Knights were absolutely dominant all season, and I mean, there's not much else to say about them. Okay, so now we can go ahead and move on to our OHL and QMJHL champions, uh, Mike. You will actually take another award here for our QMJHL Conference Champion for Season 8. I mean, anybody who's anybody who's actually followed this, this season knows that the Armada were absolutely dominant. Um, they, they ran into one one problem in the in the queue, and that was the Cape Britain. Uh, they ended up coming out on top, but uh, they, they, they absolutely dominated everybody else. They, they ran through Moncton. Uh, they, they had the first round by... Um, and, and all season, they were great. The, the Armada take the Q Championship. This should come to no surprise to anyone. And it shouldn't have to start the playoffs. For sure. And we will kick it over to Marino for the OHL champions. Uh, this, uh, this season's OHL champions was the Kingston Frontenacs. And Kingston was a very good team throughout the entire season. Uh, really turned it on during the playoffs. Uh, my team had the great luxury of playing them, and they kicked our ass. They played really well. Uh, Top Chez, Remy Darko, Scumbag Jared, all those players leading their team in points. Uh, you have SF49er, who didn't even lose a game in regulation. I think he lost one game in overtime. Audacity only lost one game. Really great management team over there. Really put together a really good team. Uh, I'm I'm going to enjoy watching them come back next season. I'm curious to see how they do next season. I think it'll be uh, another top team. Okay, and you also are assigned the honor of giving our Memorial Cup champion for the season six, or season eight, um, LGCHL season, and that would be. And the uh, Memorial Cup champion is obviously, you know, if nobody watched, Armada played outstanding throughout the playoffs I think uh, their team all around especially goaltending uh, definitely helped them win in uh, in legends so hats off to them for mm -hmm. pulling off an upset because I didn't think the Q was going to win yeah, Just my it's kind of like, video, it's kinda like, like sweet good. sweet victory for yeah. everybody yeah because yeah. nobody expected anybody from the Q to come Not up and step up against the top teams here in the O. Except for by Mercy and Grace, actually. 
Um, Mercy was right about something. Mercy was right about something. <laughs> <laughs> he, was. he was wrong. This time he was right. They, you know, he, he he actually said, if there is a god, somebody out of the queue will come out and win the, win the Memorial Cup champion. <laughs> and I guess there is a god, so there's proof. There you go, atheist. Yes. Yes. All right, and within that and Memorial think, Cup talk, um, I am going to be announcing oh. our Memorial Cup MVP. The MVP of the Memorial Cup is... Declared by the um, winner, G the winning GM, which would be uh, Dabella for the um, Armada, and he decided to go with Touch My Herpeter, probably one of the most interesting names. Herpeter. Yes, Herpeter. probably Herpeter. the most Herpeter. probably the most interesting name out of. I swear anything. to God, he only he only said that to hear you say it. <laughs> probably, uh, and, and that's why I love that was a sign. From this one specifically, but uh, touch my herb derp. He played left wing, has six and one record in seven games played, a outstanding 27 points for t for 17 goals, 10 assists, a plus minus of nine, and a 47 shooting percentage. Six goals on the power play, one on the short handed. So a uh, pretty good uh, playoff run for us. Uh, Touch my herb derp and the whole Armada team. Congratulations to them for winning the Memorial Cup. Definitely a uh, well-deserved championship for that whole team. I know Legend and the Bell are both moving up to the AHL, going their separate ways. Um, best of luck to them and best of luck with Kingston this season with, with their returning managers. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the player awards, the uh, single wise awards, I guess you could say. And we are going to start out with our defenseman of the year for the CHL. Um, Marino, you will get the job of announcing our defenseman of the year. All right. Our defenseman of the year for season eight is Cronwall X55 from London Knights. He had an astounding, astounding 18 and three record with 54 points. 11 goals, 43 assists with a 53 plus minus. Me as a defenseman, <clears throat> I know for a fact that a plus minus like that is absolutely outrageous as a defenseman. I think he was a good defenseman all year. I think he moved the puck well. I think he shut it down defensively in the defensive zone and really worked hard in the offensive zone getting great puck movement with that team. That team was all about puck movement the entire season, and I think he really helped them. I think this award, you know, hands down, should have went to him, and I'm glad he got it, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Cromwell definitely was a solid player, a key part for that London Knights team. And with, the, with an honorable mention to SF that we mentioned, yeah. that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's an honorable, honorable mention to him. He was brought up into this, but Cromwell took it. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Um, now we go on to our goaltender of the year. But, uh, Whale Fan, you will be announcing our goaltender of the year. And uh, please tell everybody so, who had the honor of winning this season. This award goes to Legend X98. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, Legend was a very solid goalie this season. Um, posting up some spectacular numbers in the regular season and the playoffs. Um, one of the top goalies will be going up with the uh, with Timbo Slice for the Toronto Marlies this season in the AHL. We should wish the best of luck to him. Okay, so now we will go ahead and we will continue with our next award on the list. Rookie of the Year, which Whale Fan will be announcing for us today. Um, Whale Fan, you go ahead and uh, take the floor, my friend. Yes, back again present the Rookie of the Season award, I'm going to say season. Uh, this particular player played for the Barry Colts this season, 16-6-0 this season, 107 points, 71 goals, and 36 assists, with a tremendously high plus-minus with plus 51. And this player currently was drafted by the Winnipeg Jets, 29th overall. Only sits on the Manitoba Burrs Moose roster, Mighty X93. Congratulations on your Rookie of the Season award. Not to be confused with Midi, Midi. X23. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I said 
Who said mighty, you fucking jackass? <laughs> Fuck. Alright. The, um, the mighty the mighty midi. Yes. Yeah, My, the mighty midi. Definitely. Right. Um Midi Fuck. is honestly I've played with Midi a couple times. Very nice guy, good player. Um, I, I think he I think I can speak for him on this one where he will take this award in a very nervous fashion. <laughs> yeah, oh yes. Um, so thank you, Will Fit, for announcing that one. Um, the Mighty yeah. Midi, X39, taking the Rookie, aka Prospect of the Year award. Home. All right. So next up, we're going to give it over to Sir Mike Knight for our Sportsman of the Year award. So in case anyone is kind of a little bit like confused on like what it is, it's basically the player that showed, I guess you could say, like the most class. Um, on the ice and off the ice, they were a fairly good player this year, but they still, like, they weren't, they basically weren't arrogant, they were good around the forum, very, uh, a very sportsmanlike person, so to speak. So, uh, we're going to kick it over to Sir Mike tonight to announce our award for Sportsman of the Year. Alright, Sportsman of the Year this season, uh, 21 wins, 5 losses, with 1 OT loss, 106 points. 54 goals, 50, 52 assists with a plus 50 minus goes to Pauly Chunks of the Peterborough Peets. Um, absolutely deserving of this award, I believe. I mean, his, his stats speak for himself, so that's that side of it goes. And then he's actually the one who uh, made the announcement that they were going to go ahead and just take the loss uh, in Game 7 against Ottawa. Um a very classy guy. You never see him talking shit in the forums. All he does is praise the other teams, whether he wins or loses. Um, so I believe the abs absolutely deserving uh, Pauly Chunks. Also, he got drafted by Winnipeg and is also mm. sitting on Manitoba's roster right now. Actually, I do want to say he got traded from Manitoba to uh, Rod uh, for was... Beauregard 93. That was new news. Yeah, um, it was actually posted in the uh, in in the chat, so that was interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't sit in the chat box anymore. Yeah, fair enough. I've moved on to bigger and better things. And, and the, let's not forget the either the um, the classy move by the Peets to um, not make to say they're not going to play the uh, in fourth game seven in the Ottawa Peterborough series. Uh, Paulie was the one that made that threat. Um, just one example of um, how um, how much of a uh, nice guy he was throughout the season, but also played really well on the ice. A huge contributor to that Peterborough team that uh, went to the second round this year. So, uh, congrats to Pauly. I'm very happy. We are all very happy for you to accept the award. And uh, we will now move on to our next award of the evening. The Manager of the Year Award is selected by the CHL staff. Uh, shout out to them, by the way, for a uh, great season, um, staff-wise. Um, <clears throat> the man announcing that award will also be none other than Sir Mike Knight. Um, tell us who our manager of the year for season eight is, Mike. Uh, the manager of the year was was picked by Zeno, but it was also my pick for this award as well, and we've given him a lot of praise over at the doghouse. Um, is Pastor Gaines of the Spitfire the man? The man took over a team that should have, by all rights, absolutely exploded and became the, the new Guelph, right? Um, um, the Guelph Storm. But instead, made moves, got people to stick around, got people playing, and ended up getting a a playoff spot. Some, somewhere they should never have actually been. Um, you know, most... Most teams blow up like that. The new management take over, and they cannot keep in, keep control because everybody just wants to go. Um, so, Pastor Gaines took that team, took the reins, and they stayed with an absolute tear to make it up to, to seventh place uh, in the O. So, congratulations to to Pastor Gaines of the Wizard Spitfire. Yeah, that was um, very, very well deserved by Pastor. Good guy as well. Um, like you said, like I think they were actually the fifth seed at the time. Uh, were they not have like an eight in one week bumped up to like the fifth or sixth seed? Well, what I mean, once Germaniac went went down, it, it just that the team started to started to implode on itself. And uh, Pastor Pastor took the reins just before they they absolutely fell out. And 
he did what he did what he had to do, right? Oh yes, um, for sure. Okay, so now we will be moving on to our CHL top scorer award. This goes to the player that scored the most overall points in the CHL this season. Um, pretty uh, clear cut, basic award. Um, but the winner of that award, a President's Trophy winner in AGM of the North Bay Battalion, none other than McPluggles, who buried in 100. And 14 points on the season had a very solid year um, unfortunately um, they were knocked out in the first round in a uh, one versus eight seed upset by the Barry Colts um, led by Mitty um, that, that was a very interesting matchup and let me tell you McPuggles we, we had to play against his line I believe this season um, he is a very talented player the guy's just skilled overall uh, what are you guys thoughts on him uh, Mike, you want to go ahead and start? I, I mean, McPluggles, the the only first-hand experience I have against McPluggles is when, when we hosted the All-Star game, and McPluggles absolutely went off in the All-Star game. Uh, I believe he was one of the people that ended up with a with a hat trick for the O. Mm -hmm. He's an absolute stellar player, uh, with, and he had a lot of competition this season. I mean, he absolutely he absolutely dominated in a, in a season where there were a lot of people right under him. I mean, a lot of people trying to catch him, like Polly Chunks and Nitty, uh, who also have awards. Um, so yeah, McBlood was absolutely great player, and and he deserves this award obviously because he scored the most. <laughs> um, yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, Marino, do you? Yeah. Marino was a, he was an amazing that? center. I mean, I, I went up against him. I think two or three times and he was an old, always a hard person to defend uh i just want to congratulate him on his award and i also want to congratulate him on taking the agm spot in the ahl next season for season 23 with rochester mm -hmm. him and sharp will be moving up to the ahl so i wish them the best of luck mm -hmm. okay so for our next award um as we all know there have been several um shows that we've seen throughout the season we've had the doghouse We've had a couple other shows, we've had mic'd up, we've had the playoffs predictions shows, a lot of great quality media coming out this season, and for those efforts, we will have the media awards. So, um, these awards were selected by our media director, F5 Penguin, a huge shout out to him for uh, giving us the opportunity of letting us uh, do things like these, and um, the media award winners, um, we had Sir Mike Knight, and the Doghouse crew. Welcome to the LG Doghouse, I am your host. Uh, welcome to the LG Doghouse. Welcome oh, to the LG Doghouse, I am your host, Sir Mike Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want... I, I really... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I want to thank my arms for always being by my side. <laughs> Uh, my legs for always supporting me. <laughs> and my fingers because I always count on them. <laughs> and, and, and my hips for never lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I think that was the most, the, big, the most Thanks, hilarious God. speech Thanks in the so CHL much. history. But I'll, I'll, in all seriousness, thank you very much for this award. Uh, I, we tried our best to to bring entertainment to to everybody this season. Uh, myself, uh, by mercy and grace, and uh, Golden Aces started this. Uh, we want to also thank, uh, um, and it would never have been possible, uh, Bogey for his two days of contribution, <laughs> and of course, uh, Audacity and Easy Bro, uh, who you know Greasy wanted to continue the show, but by no fault of his own, he couldn't. Uh, so I mean, we, we obviously keep uh, keep Greasy in, in our in our thoughts and prayers mm -hmm. for for him and his family and what he's going through. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, Husky strong. Congratulations yep. to you guys, by the way, Mike. Um, very very well deserved. You guys had a great show all season. Very entertaining. I I, I think the reading and what was the uh, snake episode. I think that was probably one of the key moments in the show this year. That, I, I that, think that, I that think the, the I think the dramatic episode. reading of of Colonel. Sausage to Snake was was really what put us on the map as far as you know people watching us in this in the CHL, um, and and a lot of the things that we did at the very beginning were were um, pretty borderline, and 
you know, I think we said like five or six in five or six different episodes that we're going to get banned. Um, <laughs> so I mean, it was it was pretty cutting. It was pretty cutting edge, and it was it was riding the uh, the thin line that is you know what media should do. Um, and and I think that's what made it entertaining. It wasn't the same old you know stat show. Um, while we did, we were informative. We were also entertaining. So I mean, that's that's exactly what we. And, and I couldn't have done it without without my panel. I mean, it's I'm just the host, you know. The, the panel is what makes the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, it's come that point of the show. We have our final award, our best award, the CHL Most Valuable Player of Season Eight, and I am proud to have the honor of announcing that this this uh, this evening. Um, this person came in week three the CHL was passed up in the QMJHL draft was passed up in TC on the reshuffle and one team gave him a chance called the Barry Colts and ever and boy did he um, take that chance and run with it um, this man being Mitty X 39 for the Barry Colts um, a lot of, this is this was very much a toss-up as there were so many talented players this season, honestly. Um, this this was actually probably the, literally the closest drawing we had. Um, I can speak for myself, Mike, Marino, and Whale fan, where we were kind of uh, debating on who necessarily should have won this award. Um, we had a lot of great players, but uh, Mitty was the one to uh, pull it out in the end for Barry. Um, like I said, had an absolutely spectacular season for somebody that uh, missed the first little portion of it. Um, didn't actually play until the uh, QMJHL official season started up. Um, was in the bear, well, was assigned to Barry in the uh, TC reshuffle. Um, many stats this season. I'm pulling them up right now. Um, had over a hundred points. While you're putting, while, while you're pulling those up real quick, I, I mean, I do want to give an honorable mention to to yes. Legend, the goaltender mm -hmm. out of the Armada, uh, who we, was it was it was a toss up between Midi and Legend, and uh, Midi ended up winning out. But I, I do want to give uh, honorable mention to Legend. Well, yeah, Legend also very deserving. Um, one goaltender of the year for a reason. I'm definitely excited to see both of these two in the AHL. And uh, Mitty this year um, had had kind of switched around um, four positions between wings and center for a game or two. Um, topped off with 22 games played, a 16-6 record, with 107 points, seven goals, 36 assists, a plus-minus of positive 51, and a 39 shooting percentage, eight power play goals, three short-handed. Um, I, I think it's very much safe to say that uh, Mitty was the was one of the big vocal points of a Barry turnaround this season. Uh, a team that was kind of on the verge of almost not even being in a playoff spot, pushed around in, G, in AGMs. Um, but Mitty, uh, between Mitty and Clutch and Bogey, or uh, Boggy, um, excuse me, Boggy, um, between the three of them, Barry made a turnaround, but Mitty, um, uh, spectacular. Uh, what, what, what were you got? What are you guys' thoughts on Mitty? Um, oh, he absolutely Mike, turned yeah. around the Barry Colts team. I mean, if if, <laughs> if, you, if you think about an MVP, an MVP is somebody who carried, who, who not necessarily carried the team, but, but did nothing but make the team better. Uh, and in, to take a team like the Barry Colts, who by all rights should never have made the playoffs, uh, unless they had Mitty. Um, and to make a team like that and make the playoffs, it's just absolutely outstanding, and that's absolutely de deserving of an MVP. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that there was no shot that Barry was going to make playoffs without Mitty. I think Mitty alone played less games and was the leading goal scorer of the league, had the most goals with, I think, six less games played, which I think says a lot about Mitty. I think it's a, he's a really good player, and I think the AHL – or the NHL, depending on where he ends up. Uh, I think he's. I think he deserves it. I think he deserves a shot in the NHL, and I think he's going to do really well in the A. And, and did, it, did it surprise anybody else that Mitty slipped to number 29 in the NHL draft? That draft was very confusing. It, 
I that suspecting. draft to me personally, it, it was a draft. I think we, we saw a lot of former VHL guys in it, which I think has a bit to do with it because realistically, like the, the NHL obviously at the top level, but let's be honest, you do have connections. I think definitely a lot of those picks did have like yeah. what to do, like with who knew who, who knew who also. Yeah, like my top three in the draft, I would have thought was going to be Mitty, Pauly, and Cronwall first three picks and. Uh, even even Mitty and Polly were saying that Cronwall would go would go above them. Yeah, I, don't even think I thought Polly Mitty, would the fact that Mitty slipped to 29th to the Winnipeg Jets it just surprises me. And yeah, very much. And I think it's funny that the same team drafted all three of them. Somebody knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so huge congratulations to Mitty. I know um, both me and Mike actually both had talked to him in our shows. Um. Great guy, very, uh, very uh, much congratulatory for the award to him. And, and that hair, man. Yeah. That, that hair. <laughs> oh, that's enough to make Audacity jealous. <laughs> We're nervous. And and also, by the way, I actually do uh point something out that some of these cute the Q teams had opportunities to pick them up. He actually posted a, a thread before the QMJ draft. Kind of um, saying, you know, like that he that he was in the league and he wanted to be drafted and uh, kind of naming out some of his stats and and he and he kind of got got a little bit of hate for posting that thread. We see most people get hate for that kind of stuff, and he was passed up in the QMJ draft. No one picked him up, and this is this is kind of a nice little story for any TC guy that even if you're not getting the games at first, earn your way up. That that manager, I'm sure if you can back it up, will be more than happy to give you a shot. I don't want I don't want to talk about the Q shuffle. All right, <laughs> let's just say let's just say I had let's just say I had Juanasaurus and and the franchise on my uh, on my oh. TC when that draft went. So uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> definitely lost out there. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I think that's about it here. Um, does anybody have any uh, uh, final words for the uh, closing of the season eight media going into season uh, nine or season twenty? Shameless plugs. It's time for shameless plugs. Go ahead, Will Ben. <laughs> it is time. I believe uh, I have a fair share of news for the upcoming season in the CHL. Uh, I'd like to first talk about the playoff puck I used during the shows, which is right here, guys. It does. I did not put anything new on it. Honestly, I didn't want to waste, waste any more ink. Sorry if it's <laughs> offensive to anybody or any way possible. Um, so that puck will be officially going into retirement, a.k.a. eBay. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Um, it won't be on eBay. I hope Auda- it Audacity will pay you 50 cents for it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyways, get. yeah, that's probably the matter. I think right he'd pay um, 10 anyways. just to burn it. Anyways, um, do you think, well, in media, we've been having these long shows and I think it's time that we had something that may be a little shorter for those of um, our LG, you know, players that come on and play out in this league to watch a shorter bit version of a show. Now, I will be become the host of this show, Whale Fans Crease, starting in season 23 in the CHL. This will involve all CHL teams in the upcoming season with a short panel which the panel changes every episode, obviously. Um, and it'll mainly get to know the newer GMs and the seasoned GMs in the CHL right now as well. So it's a really good mix of the CHL, pretty much. And I can't wait to get started. Also brought to you um, through the uh, the Mage's new name for the, his upcoming show, uh, The Fourth Line, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. Right, Pigeon? Yep, correct. Okay, yep, the fourth and, line. And of course, no, look out for the LG Doghouse coming back uh, for season Dog 23 house. in the CHL. Uh, joined by, by By Mercy and Grace, a, a little quieter By Mercy and Grace. Uh, <laughs> you. Gold, Golden Ace's Audacity and hopefully Greasy Bro, depending on how he's feeling. Uh, and and you, we got a new format that's, that's going to make shows a little bit shorter, uh, but still is entertaining. So look out for that next season. Yes, and I'll be in movie. the NHL next season with Washington, so I plan on <laughs> yeah. I plan on keeping my ties in the CHI. I, I plan on 
you know. We'll miss keep, you, Marino. It's I okay. plan on keeping my connections, and maybe I'll make it a guest appearance. But other than that, I'll be up in the NHL working on my own game. So, yeah, I have a lot to to worry about up there with my game. So, and then um, I will be with the San Jose Sharks as their AGM for season twenty three. Major will be taking my form, my um, older Kitchener Rangers squad. He will not have the resigns to Kitchener, though, unfortunately. But he'll be able to rebuild Kitchener once again from scratch for three straight seasons in a row. Um, I'll be excited to watch um, from the sidelines and the CHL. And I uh, can't wait to get started with the new show, Well Fans Crease. A lot of it's already set up and ready to go. We just, uh, first show, um, looking to get started. Anybody that's interested and wants first dibs um, may send my, myself a PM or even Major. I'll let it to go to Major as well. He'll probably let me know one way or another. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, we'll sure to get that started. Yes, indeed. It looks like there'll be a lot of uh, great media this season between uh, Whale Fan having uh, your show, um, the Doghouse having another season, which I'm sure will be very enjoyable. If it's um, if it's as entertaining as last season, um, season eight, I'm sure it'll be great. Um, we also have the fourth line coming. Maybe a couple more things. Uh, we'll see how things go. But I think next season for media wise will be uh, very good. And another congratulations to the Doghouse for the media award. Very well deserved. Um, and also a huge shout out to Krispy Kramer for editing the show today. Um, he's done all the stuff with the graphics and all the uh, editing and cuts and stuff. A huge shout out to him. Put a lot of time and effort into editing it for us and we do appreciate it. Um, I think he also put a commercial out for the uh, Doghouse Awards show, didn't he Mike? Two of them. Two oh, commercials, two of them. Yep. yes. Yes. Yep. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, the, the what was it, the, the glitch going the glitch and the and the my thumbs on broke gloves or mm-hmm. whatever the hell it was. It was great, dude. It was freaking hilarious. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I think that just about wraps it up. Thanks for um, F five for sending the awards in. Uh, but thanks for Zeno also for sending the Manager of the Year awards. I know that they uh, have a lot in their place between real life and handling all the things with their separate jobs. Um, we do appreciate them pitching in for giving them their winners. Um, thank you to all of you guys for uh, watching our awards show um, for Season 8. It's much appreciated. Um, thanks to all of our uh, CHLers, our media staff, our CHL staff, or our league staff in general. Um, for putting all the time and effort, they don't get paid for this realistically, so the amount of effort they put into it is absolutely insane. We do appreciate it, means a lot, thanks to you guys, thanks to uh, Whale Fan Mike and Marina for sticking through for a couple hours with us, um, had a couple technical difficulties before the show, um, so we do appreciate them uh, sticking around, staying patient and all, as uh, they have their... Um, real life things obviously to take care of and for them to put the time into this throughout the last week or two is uh, very much appreciated. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and leave it out now. For myself, CKX Whale Fan 26, Sir Mike Knight, and Marino Swag, thank you guys for all the CHL support this season, and we will see you guys next season in LGCHL Season 23. Have a great rest of your offseason. Best of luck to everyone in their careers. And best of luck to the returning managers and new managers for next season. Everyone have a great night.